So a little while back, I had one of my Patreon supporters, in fact, my only Patreon supporter, ask me a question about how WRC wings work and specifically how the little strake fins through the sort of 2000s, early 2000s era, like WRXs and stuff like that work. Now, these fins, you can see them here. They have a whole bunch of them across the wing. So you can see that sort of thing going on there. And this is on a, on a Ford. I think this is a Fiesta or a Focus. Um, and you can see, again, this fin system here. Now, the obvious thing that they do to me is impart a side force when the car is at an angle of yaw. But I thought I'd try something a little bit different today. And instead of just giving you an explanation of it, I reappropriated some of the JKF Aero CFD resources to allow me to do an aerodynamic analysis of the finned and non-finned configuration and get you some actual numbers on what sort of work they're doing. So rally cars, unlike sort of road circuit cars, are often at quite high angles of yaw. Let's say five, 10 degrees is not uncommon. It's quite standard. In fact, they go even higher than that. Whereas more sort of road course cars or sort of single seater races, you'll end up with much smaller degrees of yaw because the slip angles required are much smaller. And you can watch my video on tires and why that's the case. So as a result, we're going to be optimizing our aerodynamics for high angles of yaw. Now on top of that, we also have to deal with the fact that our ground surface isn't providing us as much friction as we would like. So often side force is worth more to us than downforce. Now watch my video on how the shark fins work for sort of explanation of what's going on there. But let's get into the setup of this CFD or virtual wind tunnel model so I can show you what we sort of looking at and what we found and what sort of numbers these wings get. Now what we've basically got is a, a really simple car that I just quickly catted up. And then on the rear, we've got the wing. So we can see here that this wing is just a regular wing, no fins, nothing too fancy going on. And then we also have the finned wing, which we can see here has a whole bunch of those WRC style fins. Now all the fins are a little bit of an airfoil profile shape, but the entire wing structure is identical apart from the fins. To start you off with some basic numbers, if we look at the no finned versus the finned case in a straight line, we actually lose a little bit of downforce with the fins as you'd expect because you're taking away a little bit of wing area. So we have about 7% less downforce in a straight line. We've got 2% more drag because of the extra pressure drag on the faces of the fins. Side force is the same because we're in the straight line. If we increase the angle to five degrees, we end up with about a 3.2 loss in downforce over the no finned case. So the no finned case is still making more total downforce, but the distance isn't as much between the two. We've got way more drag for the finned case. So we're looking at 21% increase in drag for the finned case. And then for the side force, we actually have almost three times the side force for the fin case than the no fin case, probably about what you'd expect. If we up that angle of your further to 10 degrees, we end up with about 6% less downforce from having fins. And we end up with a lot more drag. We end up with 37% more drag and we end up with about 1.7 times the side force. Now, the important thing to notice here is that we were pretty much always below on downforce and are always up on drag from the unfin case. So where are we getting that benefit back? Well, it's all in the side force that's being applied on the car by those fins. Now that's gonna be a big help for stability because obviously as the car's back comes out, you're gonna get more side force into the corner. And also if your coefficient of friction is low, you're gonna end up with side force forcing the entire car into the corner, which should improve your cornering acceleration. Now let's have a quick look at why this is happening. Now for the straight line case, we can see everything is nice and well straight. But when we look around to the fins, we can see that there is very little difference to the distribution here. While the outside has changed a little bit, you'll notice that in fact there's a little bit lower pressure on the tops here, possibly because of how the airflow that's coming in at an angle that way is being directed around these airfoils here, because essentially the end plates are acting like a kind of airfoil. So that's sort of the difference we're seeing there. But the top surface here, pretty much the same, nothing majorly different going on. And obviously these fins are going to produce more drag by their nature. We can see that because the wing is relatively close to its base plate, the low pressure field off the bottom of the wing is interacting with that base plate a little bit in both cases. And that's gonna happen with any surface that you have in conjunction with the sort of nearby aerodynamic surface. So if your rear wing is close to your boot lid, for example, 
it's going to cause your boot lid to be lifted up by the pressure field of the rear wing. And once we start to put it in yaw, we can see we've now got the car at five degrees angle of yaw. If we look around the back, let's see what's going on here. Straight away we can see that we're getting a low pressure field now on all of the sides this side of the strakes, which obviously the strakes aren't present here, so we're not getting that. If we look around the other side of the strakes, we can see that the field, while it's still low pressure as a consequence of the wing, is a little bit higher pressure. Like, we're talking ever so slight bits and pieces, and this is sometimes easier to visualize with a different color scheme. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This color scheme just lets us see stuff over a wider spectrum. So we can see here, we've got the sort of light yellow to green color here, and we've got a sort of bluish color there. And if we look to the other side, we can see that we're getting more on the sort of purpley color here, which is the higher pressure on that side, so we're getting better pressure recovery there. And the, un the underside fins are getting a slightly higher pressure field on that side than that. You can notice that it's barely visibly observable. We're not getting a huge difference here. And we're, we're going to see more of an advantage sort of by these top fins than the bottom fins because the bottom fins are still interfering with the suction side of the airfoils we're about to see in the next case, which is the 10 degree yaw which when we look at it, we can see here, these top surfaces all acting just like wings. That's the pressure distribution that you expect on a wing. So we can see that we're getting this big sort of side force here, which is what we're seeing in the results. Um, and you see obviously the whole car kind of acts like a wing when it's at this sort of angle of yaw. So we're going to get that lateral force going on there. If we see around this bit right here, this bit's now getting more and more exposed to the free stream flow. If we imagine the vortex coming off the the pillar here, it's going to direct more free stream air here, which is why we end up with a relatively low pressure over here compared to the higher pressures as we move along. So we're gonna be getting a lot of force from this outside vein and then comparatively less as we move along. You can also see the effects of your inherent here in terms of what we're losing in downforce. Now, these plates causing this sort of low pressure region on this side mean that this side of the wing is getting less of a pressure field on top of it because if, for this wing to get pressure, low pressure that way, it also has to suck low pressure up here. So that's why we're losing downforce on this wing compared to the straight case, which only loses it off the end plate and not off the subsequent plates that are going up. We can also have a look at the wall shear stress, which is basically just a measure of how attached or separated the flow is. And we can see that in the, the Yord case, we've actually resulted in a lot of flow separation along the underside of the wing compared to the straight case, which is again responsible for more of that downforce loss as we go along. In this case, we're only getting the separation off the end plates. And this is kind of, if you watch my video about swan neck wings and how they work, you'll be able to sort of understand this phenomenon and why it's undesirable to have those plates. Of course, in this case, because we're operating at a reasonably high angle of yaw, it means that the benefits of having the fins in place for rally cars outweighs the costs of losing their outright downforce. If you were running a car that's not in as much yaw or has a grippier um, ground terrain, you'll end up with a loss in total performance via these plates being located in the wing. Just to analyze that up, I can look at the, the available aerodynamic grip, which is basically the coefficient of friction on the ground multiplied by the downforce, then plus the lateral force, so that way we get the total amount of force available. I hope that makes sense. Now, for a, a relatively low coefficient of grip case, like a rally case, let's say we've got a coefficient of grip of about 0.8, we can see that at low angles of yaw, we want a non-finned wing, but then as we get to about sort of three degrees, we're going to want a, a fin, finned wing, so you could still even consider a road rally would be useful with this level of grip, and then as we get higher, we want even more. If we're running a higher level of grip, so we, we change our coefficient of friction to say something like two, which is really very, very high, but we can see that the non-finned wing actually outperforms the finned wing at all points. So it depends on how much grip you've got available as well as how much slip angle you're getting on your car as to which one of these wings you wanna go for. So low grip, high slip, you wanna have a finned rear wing, high grip, low slip, you wanna have a clean rear wing. Hopefully I didn't get too engineering on that. I hope the CFD was relatively easy to understand. I decided to try and simplify the model to make it easier for you to understand as viewers. Um, if you are a racer out there and you are looking for a bit of CFD work or aerodynamic work on your car, you can go and check out the consultancy I work for, www.jkfaero.com. 
Um, a lot of the CFD stuff we do there, CFD iterated design, you should really check it out because I think you'd be surprised by how cheap it is for your race car. Sorry for the shameless plug, but it's good to get some traffic going there. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out my other videos if this is your first. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And see you next time.